Hi everybody, it's Friday. So I wanted to talk to you about something this week that came up after a comment on my blog. And it was one of those times where you just step back and realize, hang on, I've come so far. Um, and because this is what I want for all of you, I wanted to share it with you. So uh, I posted on my blog a piece promoting Nicholas Wilton's free Art to Life workshop, which I want to talk to you about briefly, uh, and telling everybody that my how much my work had changed as a result of working with Nick. And I showed the progress of my own work over the last few years. I used to, like many people do, to copy my work from other people, not copy, but emulate. I think I really like the way this person creates atmospheric, moody, calm, peaceful scenes. I'd like to do that. And then I'd work on how to try and do it. And it would never be as good as theirs because it wasn't coming from within me. And I'd always be slightly frustrated with it. Um, so my work, say two years ago, was just when I first got into acrylic paints, was only two years ago. And my work was at one of my favorite painters, lovely lady called Leslie Birch. She lives in York, near me, and she paints atmospheric um, landscapes, abstract landscapes. And I really loved her. So I wanted that same feeling of atmosphere and excite, you know, the excitement of the way she applies paint in my own work. And I would try and emulate that and not really get anywhere. I didn't want to copy her. So I wanted to find my own way, but I couldn't. And, um, but those paintings were quite popular with some people and some of them sold. And on this blog post, I posted some of those old paintings and then I put how my work's progressed since working with Nick and what's changed. And um, this person said something like, hmm, I'm trying to be positive, but I have to say that I preferred the calm, peaceful work of earlier. Um, and in the past, that comment would have really thrown me Back when I was doing the Calm Peaceful Landscapes, if someone had said something negative, it would have thrown me. And the reason why it would have so hurt me and thrown me and made me defensive is that I would have known it was true. Um, I, I would have known, not that their comment was true, but I would have known there's something wrong with that work and what was wrong with it was it wasn't really mine. So I was very sensitive to any criticism of it and I kept it to myself a lot. I didn't share it as often as I could have because I was frightened of that criticism. And actually, for a lot of people, they prefer what I was doing then to what I'm doing now. Um, but they're not my audience, that's okay. A lot of people prefer what I'm doing now to what I was doing then, and they're my audience. Because the difference between then and now is that I really believe in, feel, mean what I'm painting. And so I can't be hurt or knocked by someone saying they don't like it. I understand. I understand that giant, bold, in-your-face, abstract paintings are not for everyone. But what matters is that I like it. What matters is that I feel it uh, deeply inside uh, that I'm getting out what needs to get out. And therefore, it's satisfying. Um, I saw a quote that said, being heard is healing. And the quote was about people talking over their problems and when they're sad, just having someone listen to you is a healing process. But actually as an artist, being heard is healing. Um, getting out what's inside you and showing it to other people in a gallery, in your home, online, wherever, it's a healing process because you're being heard. Not the you that you walk around with a mask on all day, but the real you that's inside is being heard. And so I just thought, you know, the, the reason, the fact that I wasn't upset by this comment, what it made me think about is how much our lack of confidence in our own work comes from that lack of it being our own. And there's a process you go through to make work your own. There's a process you go through of digging in deep, of learning to let go with pain, of, uh, and then of learning 
uh, principles of learning things that can help you. So first you have to identify what is, who is it I am, what is it I have to say to the world, and then how can I use the principles of art like composition and colour and mark making and texture to do that. And this applies whether you're abstract or representational artist. It applies whether you paint big bold abstract or you paint dog portraits. It doesn't matter what you paint, what matters is, is the essence of you coming through it or are you emulating someone else? And by the way, there's nothing wrong with emulating someone else if you're okay with it. But I'm talking about I wasn't okay with it and that's what made me defensive if anyone criticised or that's what made me hurt and go small if anyone criticised. Now, I just, it's literally water off a dog's, duck's back. And the process that I went through to get to that was the process that I now teach in the courses that I run. My course is not starting again till August. I finally nailed down a date. I know I said different dates, but it's going to start again in August. Early bird registrations with a discount are going to be in July. But until that point, I don't have anything except these videos and blog posts to offer you in terms of teaching you that process. But what I can tell you is and there'll be a link uh, below this video that if you sign up for Nick's free workshop, uh, then you'll learn some of what you need to know completely free of charge. And you, can, you can't say better than that. I'll talk about that a little bit in a second. I want to show you what's happening in this creative frenzy that I'm in at the moment. So I'll do that now. Right, so you'll need to excuse the dodgy camera work because I have to hold my camera and do this. There's my big bin full of uh, all the kitchen roll that I use to clean my brushes, a box of paints I haven't opened, collage papers, uh, and then just an absolute mess. This is embarrassing, right? And, and I didn't want to tidy up and give you a sanitized view. So that book I got in a secondhand store, it's for chopping up. That's a tub of paint for throwing away. This is a can of spray that I should have put away in its place. Some gloss gel that should have gone in its place. Uh, my palette's got full, so I started using paper plates. Screwed up tissues. A tub of house paint that has, it was a tester pot we got that I'm using as underlayers. Uh, my glasses, which are going to get covered in paint being there. My palettes. These are my stay wet palettes. Something else I learned from Nicholas Wilton. All my different shades of paint, they're mostly reds. Um, here's my painting wall, which really needs a coat of paint. Look at that, all the drips going down it. I really need to tidy up here. Um, and various things going on in this series I'm working on, which I'll show you just these. Are, I've just put gloss medium on these. I like to put gloss medium on especially the red paintings because it really brings out the vibrancy of the colors. I'm not sure these are finished, they've got some bits and bobs to do, but I like to put a coat of gloss medium on when I'm relatively happy and I don't want to mess it up. That way if I put some paint on now uh, and it doesn't work, it's easy to wipe off. Uh, this is a small one, I just added some cream above that, if it's a horizon line, above that horizon line, I really like that. This cream against the red, uh, it really glows and it's not the cream that's doing that it's the cream against the color that I've put it against that's the thing about color and this is one of the things that Nick teaches in the free workshop all about how to mix amazing color color is uh, completely dependent on what you put it next to so I can show you in this one the gloss might ruin it but because I put that it's the same cream here and that's got a bit more yellow ochre in than it has here but it's basically yellow ochre and titanium white that's all it is but because it's next to these reds it sings and it makes them sing um that's really powerful thing to know is it's not the color you mix it's the color you mix and where you put it um, there's a small one down here, which I'm not sure what to do with, so that's just sitting there. These are two smaller ones, which need a lot more work. They're part of the same series, but I'm just playing with those at the moment. 
This is one of the taped off exercises that some of you have done. So it's a big sheet of watercolour paper with an old life drawing on it. I taped squares with masking tape. I painted with abandon. I took the tape off. And now I'm correcting these and turning them into little pieces on paper because we have an open studios coming up and I'd like to have some work on paper for that. So what I do with these is when I've taken the tape off now, I'll cut them into smaller pieces and I'll look at them as individual paintings and then I'll work on them some more just to see what they need. So that's it for me today. Let me just briefly tell you about this workshop with Nick. If you haven't signed up, um, what is it? It's an online workshop. That means you're not in a place with anybody else. You don't have to show work to anybody else. What happens is you sign up and you get emails sent to you with lessons. I think they start on the 26th of April. I think there are probably four videos, but um, you just watch the videos. If you want to, if you click the link, that's wherever you're watching this video, it's below somewhere. Or you can go to louisefletcherart.com slash art to life, the number two, art to life to sign up. And you'll see there that there's a free Facebook group. And that is with myself and Alice Sheridan. But we're just going to help you through any questions you have. Because some of the concepts he's going to introduce, they're both simple and complex. So they make perfect sense when you hear them, but sometimes applying them can be tricky at first and so we'll be there to answer questions and help you kind of see how it might relate to your own work. Do sign up. Uh, Nick is going to, at the end of it, he's going to launch a 12-week program that I took called CVP, the Creative Visionary Program. That program is immensely amazing but you don't have to worry about that if you don't feel like that's for you. So just because you sign up for this free thing, you're not committing to do anything paid. Um, and I know a lot of these things where they give you like a free workshop or a free webinar and it's all rubbish and you don't learn anything. And then they say, oh, give me loads of money and then you can learn. But it's not like that. I, I did his free workshop and I instantly came in here one night. I remember after the first video and I changed about three paintings that had been stuck and were in a corner. And I was like, wow. But anyway, what I wanted to say was, there's nothing to fear from signing up. You don't have to participate in anything with anybody else. You don't have to buy anything. Um, you might decide at the end of it all that you're ready to, to go on the whole journey the way I did, but you absolutely don't have to. Don't miss this opportunity. I'm here all the time and I tell you what I know. I know a tenth of what Nick knows. So I'll be doing a few conversations with him starting next week on Monday evening at 8 p.m. UK time and he'll be talking about the free workshop but I'm also going to use this opportunity to pick his brains and just kind of get as much information as I can for me and for all of you. Um, as for me, I think I'm going to stop painting now because I, I reach a point where it's like the law of diminishing returns I start messing things up and I might be getting near that point so it might be time to go and uh, do my taxes I have to do my accounting because I'm a US citizen as well as a British citizen and if you ever live if you're a US citizen you ever move abroad you still have to file taxes every year in America and so that's what I'm up to all right take care everybody bye